Welcome to the Empower Hour with Greater Nashville Mental Health. The Empower Hour will provide information and support about mental health, substance use, and behavioral health. Our goal is to share inspiring stories about transforming lives, to strike down stigma, and to encourage our community to reach out and get help when needed. Mental health is part of all of our lives. It's time we talk about it. I'm Dr. Cynthia Whitaker, President and CEO of Greater Nashville Mental Health, and it's time to get empowered. Hello, and welcome to the Empower Hour with Greater Nashville Mental Health. I'm Dr. Cynthia Whitaker, the President and CEO at Greater Nashville Mental Health. And we've been hosting this Empower Hour on and off for a little bit now. And we've been showcasing many of the different programs and things going on at Greater Nashville Mental Health. From time to time, we have a guest from outside of our organization. And today I am delighted to have Kim with me, who is the Director of Wellbeing at the YMCA of Greater Nashua, where they recently reopened a well-being center. And we have had such a pleasure collaborating with them on this adventure. So I'm delighted to welcome Kim here with me today. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So I said that you're the director of well-being at the Y. So is this a relatively new position for you? How long have you been with the Y? Yeah, um, I've been with the Y for about eight years now. This summer it'll be eight years. Um, And I started my journey there as the uh, director of healthy living. So I was uh, overseeing all of our what we call uh, EBHI programs, so evidence-based health initiatives. So things that look at chronic diseases like Live Strong for our cancer survivor population, uh, diabetes prevention, arthritis. And it was kind of a natural fit when we started to take a look at our mental health and mental well-being programs um, because I was kind of already doing a lot of that work. So I've been with the new title for, I don't know, less than six months now, but it's been a lot of fun. Mm, That's so cool. So how? How did the Y come to open a well-being center or decide on on this initiative? Yeah, so we've always kind of tried to figure out how we fit into that puzzle of mental well-being and mental health in our community. Um, We definitely don't have the experts like Greater National Mental Health. Um, Most of us, uh, most of our community probably thinks of us as like a place to go and work out or get a swim lesson, um, child care, that sort of thing. But with the pandemic and when we closed, we found that we were offering mental health services, maybe unbeknownst to us, Mm -hmm. uh, because we know now that getting in that good workout or even just getting the socialization that people get when they come to the Y is boosting their mental health. Um, So we were very lucky that we got a grant from a very generous donor um, to refurbish two of our spaces to really hone in and focus on these initiatives. Um, So it's been kind of cool to pivot and actually kind of dive into this work and see what we can do with it. So what what types of things are you doing in those spaces? Right now we're kind of supporting a lot of community efforts. Um, We've had a lot of providers come in and do presentations for the community. Um, We're starting to see more support groups come to us looking for a space which has been awesome um, because the room is it's brand new. It's it's freshly painted. It's got new carpet. So it's like a bright open welcoming space that these support groups can kind of maybe get out of the church basement or something Mm. like that. Um, It's just a new a new spot for them. Um, We are trying to offer more programming around it um, with uh, the things that we're good at, kind of like the yogas, meditation. Um, We're kind of trying to see how some other things like Reiki can kind of work into there. Um, So we're we're kind of taking it slow because we want it to be intentional. We don't want to just do something to do something. Um, We want there to be a purpose behind it. One of the things that I I love about how the launch has happened, how even the the thought about what it can look like, the dream of it, if you will, has been the collaboration behind Mm -hmm. it. I mean, collaboration is one of the values um, that we have at Greater Nashville Mental Health. And so I just really appreciate that piece. And so what, when, when, when I say that, like collaboration and you thinking about what you're doing, right, what, what resonates or how, how does that, how does that show up? for you at the Wellbeing Center? Oh yeah, tons of collaboration. Um, Cause like I said, we're definitely not experts in this area. So we are kind of like leaning on all of our, our friends and our partners out there to say, we have this space, 
Do you want to use it? How can we work together? Um, so collaborating with Greater National Mental Health on like your In Shape program, it's been so fun to sit down with your staff who are running that program to see how we can better support it, how we can kind of lift it up. We have um, all of our resources, you have your own, so just bringing it together so we can better serve um, that population. It's been really fun to kind of sit down with new community partners, people that maybe I didn't know were out there, um, and also like our members and just our community members who mm. have been invited to kind of reach out and just say like, actually, I have expertise or um, uh, experience working with this kind of thing. Do you think that fits? And it's just kind of nice to just sit down and have a conversation and just like see their skills and how passionate they can be about some of these things that I otherwise probably wouldn't get to know them. Hmm. They would just kind of hmm. like pass me in the hallway. So. I, I I love that about what what you just said. Like that you're collaborating not only with partners but with with your members, hmm. right? And f you know, for us at the mental health center, often we talk about you know our our clients' voice and their lived experience. And sometimes there's a lot more information and wealth of knowledge there than we give credit for. Yeah. Um, and so how cool that you're also seeing that, you know, that people are able to bring their expertise and their experience to then help others. Yeah, it's been really fun putting faces to names. Mm. Um, you know, you, you see their name maybe when they scan in or you hear that they took this class, but then just to actually say like, oh, I've heard your name a lot. You're this person. And now that I know that you're a certified Reiki instructor and how can we work together? So we've just found all these little gems kind of within our, our membership base and our community that have kind of just popped up mm. to us. So. It's like when, when you bring the community together, when you bring any group of people together, there's kind of a collective knowledge or a collective intelligence that's bigger than often what we what we knew was there you know when we just talk one-on-one -on -one. yeah and it's been kind of neat too because now we're kind of backtracking almost of mm. you know whenever we try to start like a new program or something we're just like well we should put out a job description and we should hire someone and like find the right candidates like they might already be here like yeah. they might just be right under our noses so kind of trying to to see how we can better utilize the the resources that we already have mm. yeah mm. so you mentioned in shape mm -hmm. So, and you mentioned kind of at the beginning, the position you shifted out of was looking at evidence-based practices kind mm -hmm. of in the um, physical health realm or, you know, what supports cancer patients. And InShape is mm -hmm. an evidence-based practice to support individuals with severe mental illness mm -hmm. and making sure that they're engaging in their physical health and their physical wellness. So it's, for us, it's like the perfect partnership. Yeah. Uh, between mental health and physical well-being because it's specifically for a group of people that often struggle to have access to physical health supports and things like that. So we really appreciate that partnership. Yeah, and it's been really great because we've had the your staff and your trainers come in and do the program for a while, um, but really being able to meet with those staff members and just kind of hear more about the program in depth and their clients it's been it's been so awesome and we're kind of just sitting there being like they've been here this whole time and it took for now for us to like meet and talk about it when like you said it's just kind of like a natural fit that we have the physical activity resources um so we could we yeah i'm just really thankful that now we get to kind of mm. work more together about it and i think there there are a lot of not only evidence-based practices but there's a lot of research behind yes the importance of bringing together physical health and mental health for all kinds of populations. So, you know, you mentioned a cardiac program or mm -hmm. a diabetes program. And, and while those programs have a lot of components of maybe nutrition and exercise, there's also that community oh, yeah. and mental health and how do you deal with a bad day kind of conversations that happen too. It's kind of like, sneaking the therapy <laughs> yeah. in with the cheese, right? The medicine yep. with the cheese, yep. as they say. Yeah, right. absolutely. And, um, you know, the why historically we have that triangle, you know, spirit, mind, and body. Um, so getting that, that spiritual fulfillment um, in with that, that connection that we see just happen, like just on its own. You have somebody come in, maybe it's their first day at the Y and they're feeling a little like, oh, I don't know where to go. They take a group exercise class and they kind of find their tribe. We see that happen every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and now we just get to highlight it. Right. So. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, a lot of people talk about exercise is good for mental health because mm -hmm. of, you know, endorphins and hormones and the things that it, you know, does biologically yep. to us. But I think there's also the benefits of exercise psychologically. Oh, yeah. Right. Definitely. Like you just said, like maybe doing it in community, finding your tribe mm -hmm. or just the thoughts that one might have about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely see the impact like somebody can come in and, you know, they go, they scan their tag and you can tell like they're just not having the best day and they spend 45 minutes doing whatever it takes for them, whether it's swimming laps in the pool, even just walking on the treadmill or walking the track. And they just leave just in such a, a better disposition, like whether they have a smile or not, you can kind of just see it in their stature. Mm. Like they got in that time that they needed. Um, and we want to be the place for that. You know, even we, t we during our tours all the time, we pass our kids stop, which is where members can drop their kids off for up to two hours. And we tell the parents like, you don't even have to work out you just want to sit and read a book like that's your time and we're happy to give that to you and you should just see the look on their faces They're like what I can just have <laughs> an hour to myself like that's just that's huge you know just for their for their mental well-being just to be able to just take a minute and we've got the kids they're safe and you can just do what you want mm. yeah it, it reminds me of the importance of taking a pause mm. Right. I mean, sometimes a pause might be to go walk, though. Yep. So it's like a moving pause. Yeah. Um, but a pause from the day to day, the routine, the getting stuck. And yeah, I love that you you give people that it doesn't have to be to work out. It yep. might be to do yoga. It mm -hmm. might be to sit out in the foyer yeah. and, you know, just, just chat read and chat, chat mm. with another mom, just kind of lean on each other. Yeah. That kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. You can't fill from an empty cup, is that how they say it kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so what what are you most proud of so far? So you said it's been like six months, something like that? I think I'm, I th I'm most proud of is that when we kicked this off and we put out all the press releases and that we were gonna be doing this work is how many people were kind of just like, well, yeah, like it makes sense. Like it kind of validated me mm. at least in being like, yes, this makes sense. Like we're meant to do this work. Um, and then definitely just going back to kind of like finding f those those community members, those members, those uh, partner organizations that might have never thought to raise their hand and say, I have this skill, I want to help with this work kind of thing. Um, but I, th yeah, I think it's it's been kind of fun just to have people be like, well, yeah, weren't you already doing that? And it's just like, Yes, but kind of, kind of, <laughs> just not but so definitely in, now. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not with such intention. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that's really that. It's fascinating to me how a conversation that we might have had to fight for, yeah, you know, five years or so even ago. Yeah, it's almost like, well, of course. Yeah, now, right? Like mental health and physical health. Right? Yeah, yeah. There yeah. is no, there is no health without mental health. Everyone has mental health. That's a, a big tagline that y, YMCA of the USA is pushing because we're not definitely not the only Y looking at this work. It's we're trying to make it a, a across the board kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone has mental health. That's what we're taking the stand behind um, and definitely trying to break down that stigma behind that word mental mm -hmm. health. You know, it, mental health can have negative connotations. Like you mentioned, maybe five years ago, we would be like, oh, I don't know about that. Right. Um, but it means different things to different people. But if you, you know, if you have a brain, you gotta keep it well. Exactly. So, you have a yeah. body, you gotta keep it well. Yeah. You have a brain, you gotta yeah. keep it well. Exactly. Gotta exercise them, yeah. I mean, a lot of times for for us, we talk about like a continuum of, of care, mm -hmm. right? And just like there's a continuum of physical health, right? Mm -hmm. There are star athletes. There are, you know, folks that like a pickup game. And yep. there are those of us that, you know, okay, like we're going to just continue to exercise on our own. And mm -hmm. that's how we take care of our, our health. And that's, that's okay, yes. right? There's a continuum of needs for yeah. physical health. Some people need more a specialized program for nutrition or diabetes. And some people can stay in a preventative place, mm -hmm. right? And mental health's the exact same. Yeah. Right, the exact same. And so there are people who maybe need more intensive support services from folks like us at mm -hmm. the Mental Health Center, 
But then there are lots and lots of people who can get the mental health support they need for their own well-being at a place like the Y. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, we want to be there for wherever they are. So mm -hmm. definitely for the people who come in and they just need the break and they need those endorphins from getting the exercise and they leave and they feel good. They feel like they're in a better place. But we definitely want to get to know everyone who comes through our doors. And if we find the people who need more intense services, we have this connection now. So we can say, hey, our friends at Greater National Mental Health, they got you. How can we get you connected over there? Like we kind of just want to be not just a gym and swim. We want to be a support for the community. So mm -hmm. having those resources and kind of um, collecting them, like we've added a, a portion to our website with tons of resources that we kind of just looked at what's already out in the community, like all of the food resources, housing, sh um, clothing, that kind of thing. So we've kind of just po popped them on our website. So if you're happening to scroll through looking for the latest swim lessons, maybe you happen upon it and you go, oh, I actually could use something like this. Mm -hmm. Like we want to be more um, more helpful in that way. We want to be more of a resource too. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it brings me back to that collaboration yep. we were talking about, right? Because I, I think really that's what we all want for our community. Yeah. Um, and it does take a little bit of humility yeah. to recognize we can't be everything to mm -hmm. everyone, but yet we're not meant to be everything to everyone, right? We need yeah. that continuum, right? Yeah. Um, but it takes communication and understanding and asking the right questions of, well, who, who are you willing to see or who is the right fit for you or what services do you have? And yeah. Just really getting to know one another in our community. Definitely. And I remember back when I first started with the Y, there used to be so many meetings like you would go and everybody would kind of sit around the table and say, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I brought flyers for this program. And um, I know we've kind of gotten back to that, but even now I still love getting the random email of like, I have a client that needs X, Y, Z, who can help with that? And, um, you know, it's it's so nice, this the community that's kind of been webbed between all of the organizations. And then every once in a while you see a new one pop up and they're like, well, I'm hoping to help out with food insecurity and everyone just kind of lifts them up. So it's mm -hmm. been, collaboration is, is so cool and being able to do this work and just knowing that all of this is going on in the background, like, I just, I feel so fortunate. Mm, mm -hmm. Most people probably don't know what, how we all kind of work behind the scenes to, to make new programs and collaborate with one another and just for the betterment of the community. So. I, in some ways, you almost don't want them to know, yeah. right? Because yeah. you want their experience to be so seamless right. that it doesn't matter yeah. where they show up, that they get connected to ultimately whatever is best for them. Yeah to thrive. Yeah. Um, to just be natural. Just like, yep, here you go. We got it. Right. We, yeah. got, we got it. And, and, and I, I, one of the things that I appreciate is just the, again, like the, the ability to just humbly say, you know, I know this piece, but I don't know this piece. Mm. Let me reach out to somebody and say, hey, do you know something more about mental health or who I could connect this member to or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And I, I think just those, even those very informal conversations, mm -hmm ultimately end up being helpful for our community. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I know back before we started this work, um, uh, Mike Lachance and Joe Manzoli, our CEO and COO, did a lot of uh, work kind of asking our community partners, like, how how do you see us fitting into this? Like, it, we definitely didn't just kind of like fly by the seat of our pants and make it all up. Like, we very much tried to, uh, to collect a lot of information and make some, some very uh, educated decisions. Um, but it, it was kind of cool that they got to kind of sit down and just pull all of these partners that we have and just say, how do we fit? Do we fit? Does this make sense? Does it not make sense? How can you help? Um, yeah. yeah. And, and feeling that, feeling that gap. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. you know, your members are so comfortable coming to you. Yeah. Right. And so for them to have access to other things there, even if it's just information about how to connect with others. Definitely. Or if it's, you know, access to a support group that, you know, if it was three blocks away, maybe they might not go. But yeah. they're used to coming to the Y. So, Definitely. Yeah. You know. We want to fit the members needs that we already have and then also just kind of get some more people through our doors, whether you join or not. Um, just again, seeing us as that resource mm. and that safe space. 
which has also been kind of cool, you know, um, just the kind of way we're set up. Like people don't naturally think like, oh, I'm going to go to the Y and work on my mental health, but maybe that's what you're doing already. And maybe you do do that intentionally, you know, down the road, you know, is it possible that we have, you know, therapists um, and uh, more clinical support staff kind of just within our, within our walls kind of doing that stuff? Maybe, maybe it ends up that that doesn't work work out, but we want to, we want to try if it's an option. Yeah. Right. Really meet people with whatever their needs are and what they're comfortable with. I mean, we do that same thing, right? Like we have folks that are very comfortable coming to us Mm -hmm. and maybe less so going to traditional primary care facility. And so we have primary care within our walls Mm -hmm. because then they're more likely to go. They know they're accepted in our agency. It's the same thing, right? Somebody just has that comfort. And so meeting them where they're at and providing them what they need for their whole life, their whole person, yeah, if you will. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So you mentioned a couple little like, hmm, dreams <laughs> in there. So do you have any like big hopes, dreams, wishes? Like if I were to invite you back a year from now, like what do you wish we might be celebrating or talking about then? <laughs> um, I, it's... It's kind of a dream, like a really big dream. Uh, there are some YMCA's that have actually like a, a medical office um, mm. or a clinic actually attached to their Y. So the patient goes in for their services and then they can go right into the Y. Mm. Um, and then it gives easier access for, you know, the physical therapy, occupational therapy, things like that, that are more fitness based. But I think it would be so cool to have that, just especially where we are. Um, that primary care kind of thing, like, you know, okay, you could get moving more as a family. Guess what? You can go right next door or literally yeah, right after this appointment. <laughs> yeah. Go, <laughs> go walk over there. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like a big dream is kind of just mm. being able to bring all of our, our partners into the Y. Um, mm-hmm. and like you said, meeting, meeting members where they are, meeting the community where they are. So you're already coming to the Y for swim lessons, you know, why not mm. get your blood pressure checked mm. or, you know, talk some things out with, with someone who can support you mm. there. So that would definitely be a big dream, but uh, shorter term, I definitely um, want to try to bring in some more su- support groups, some more programming. Um, I have definitely have some feelers out for some new things like a, a new parent support group. Mm. Um, you know, some of the feedback that in these conversations I've gotten is that coming home with a new baby, while it's such an exciting time, it's also very overwhelming and it can be very isolating. Um, so, uh, and with the pandemic, some of those things haven't come back. Most of those meetings are still virtual. Um, so offering a safe space for new parents to kind of come in, um, meet one another, kind of vent to one another and then hopefully having like a clinical support staff that can kind of just answer any of those questions kind of thing. So um, I'm still trying to kind of find those things Mm -hmm. that are Mm -hmm. very intentional and are very um, uh, supportive and welcoming to kind of bring in. So my hope for like a year from now would be to have a lot more of that kind of stuff going on. A lot more of those kind of collaborative programs and coming in, running some support groups and yeah. And again, like to me, that feels like a, a natural extension, yeah. right? I mean, the wine knows child development, right? Yep. I mean, yeah. you know, got camps and oh yeah, <laughs> you know, childcare and you know, programs to help kids learn how to swim. I mean, so it's it's yeah. not foreign to think, oh, let let's help the parents get that off right on, you know, on the right foot. Yeah. as they say, right? Definitely. Um, yeah, all all of the age groups we want to we want to be able to support. Yeah. Um, teens definitely the hardest, but mm. that's okay. Yeah. The the Y have after school programs for teens. Um, so we have uh, school age childcare, yeah. which uh, I believe it starts at kindergarten, goes through I think middle school, mm-hmm. um, and then. The Nashua branch, at least being right down the road from Nashua South, um, we see a lot of the teens come in after school. They're playing pickup games. They're working out upstairs. So we get a lot of the teens. Um, but I will say it's one of the more challenging ages to program because 
it's hard to say what they want. Mm -hmm. And then they say they want something and they, they don't want to go. So it's kind of just. Right. They might want it, but if their friend doesn't want it, right, they exactly. don't want it anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'd like, you know, birth all the way through. But those teens, man, we, we'll, f we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it might be that they're moving in other ways. And, yeah. You know, that maybe they don't need us as much. But yeah. Um, but yeah. we're here if they do. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Or for when they need that. It's just it's it's good to know that it's there. Yeah. The one thing that I, I think I want to make sure we make clear mm -hmm. is that the well-being center has some programs and support groups that people don't need to be a member to right. attend. Yeah. Right. Yep. Definitely. Um, so right now we support um, or we I'll say we house kind of we offer our space to we have a Parkinson's support group. Um, we have uh, the St. Joseph Hospital runs a grief support group. Um, and then we also have a uh, foster parent um, and adoptive parent support group. So um, all of that information can either be found in branch or on our website, um, but you don't have to be a member. You can just be a community member kind of looking for those things and just come in to the Y on those days and meet with those um, groups. Um, and then as far as the programming goes, um, we've added some of the slower yoga. So we have like a yin yoga, yoga nidra, um, we have uh, some mindfulness and meditation classes. Those are all on our group exercise schedule. Um, and I think that's it for programming right now. I'm trying to think of what else, but mm. yeah. Because I think that's really an important distinction, right? Because yes. a lot of, and I, and I think why it was important for us to have this conversation, um, because I, I think a lot of people assume, mm -hmm. right? You Everything the Y offers, you have to be a member. And while that's true for most things, yep. um, I think especially, you've been really intentional and mm. the leadership of the Y real intentional about this is for the community. Yep, definitely. Yeah, you don't have to have a membership to do any of those support groups. You can just come in and meet with them. Um, a lot of our presentations are also just community-wide. You don't have to be a member to participate in those. A lot of our family events that we're getting back to, again, open to the community. Um, so yeah, we're really trying to just bring everybody in. You don't have to ha have a membership. You can still enjoy a lot of the fun things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And usually when I, I'm talking to some of the staff from the center, some of the things I, I always ask about are like success stories. Mm -hmm. Now it might be a little too soon <laughs> for have there been any successes from the well-being center itself, but mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I think about there must be some story that really highlights for you, the importance of mental health and physical health together or? Yeah, I, I definitely have one. Um, and it was, I wasn't planning on this story. Um, so uh, there is a member and she has probably taken all of my uh, chronic disease programs. Um, and then when I started to add some well-being programs, we did um, a chakra class, uh, which was brand new for us, but the instructor is really passionate about it and she did an amazing job. And so this member decided to take it. And um, I actually had her come and share her story with the, the board and I was there listening to it and I was just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea the impact of like all of these things. Like she, she was truly just looking for community and she even said that she went out on a limb taking the chakra class because it was like nothing she has ever taken before, but she was interested in it. She thought she would try it. And just what she got out of just being with other people just talking about mm -hmm. their energies and she was like, now I have um, some crystals in my house and I never would have thought that I was, you know, getting what I got out of this class. But she, she took all these classes because she wanted to just be with other people and be connected while also working on her health. So she had kind of taken care of her physical health with all of those other programs. Now it was kind of starting to delve into the, the mm -hmm. mental wellness. And afterwards I was just like, I had no idea. Like, I know you're at the Y every day and like you're an amazing person and all this, but just she was going on a journey and mm. we were just un, kind of unbeknownst to us, just supporting her the whole way. Mm. So yeah, that, that's that been a success story. And I'm sure there's tons of other members who are feeling the same way. Like finally, I, I can kind of work on these things without feeling like it, it's, 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 it's that stigma again. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, now the why is mm -hmm. being intentional about it. So I feel safe here so I can, right. I can take care of this. Yeah. And uh, 
like you said, I'm sure there are plenty of success stories that you don't even know about. Yeah. I mean, that's that's part of, you know, the members come, they go, they yep. check in, they do their thing, they go. And, yeah. and, and in some ways, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Right? That people can be on their journey in whatever way fits them. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, what I love about the story that you shared is just how important connection is to mm. mental health. Definitely. Right? I mean, sometimes when people are in a bad space, um, both physically and mentally, we can we have this kind of desire to isolate. Mm. And, and some of that's based on fear and shame and stigma. Yep. Um, and it's the exact opposite of what we actually need yeah. in that moment. Um, and, and for me, that's a big piece of, of what I'm hearing you say. Definitely. Right. It's, it's a place where people can find that connection, which can hopefully help shift the trajectory or the, you know, if they're headed in a downward spiral, it'll help them sh lift up and figure out maybe what is the next best thing to do. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I think a special thing about the why is that we do make those connections with our members. So it happens all the time. There's somebody who say always takes, you know, this group exercise class and then we don't see them for a couple of weeks. And the instructor is kind of like, can we check in with them? Like, where have mm -hmm. they been? And, you know, maybe they're just on vacation or something like that. But we definitely um, feel very kind of, I don't know if protective is the right word, but we have that bond with them. And so if we don't see someone for a while, even if we've maybe never talked to them before, but we just notice that they haven't checked in at their normal time. We get used to seeing those those faces come through our door. Mm. And, you know, we do try to kind of reach out to them and learn their name and, you know, how are you doing today? And um, the weird silver lining of the pandemic was when we had to go to like reservation. So we knew exactly who was coming through our door at, at all times. And um, that was kind of nice because we learned a lot of members and their mm -hmm. habits. And um, but yeah, we definitely try to create that kind of family style atmosphere of we're looking out for you if you haven't come for a while. And then also kind of trying to connect members with other members because so many times, uh, another story is we have a, a, a member who takes our silver sneakers class. It's our big senior um, group exercise class. And she found herself unable to drive, very depressed. I need to go to the Y, I need to take this class. This is, this is her thing. All of these other people in the class were like, I'll pick you up. I'll drive you mm. like no excuses kind of thing. So we yeah, that's that's what we strive for. And mm. I'm sure there's tons of that happening. But, you know, we try to try to get people out. And if we're the best part of their day, then that's awesome. Even if it's just because we have an indoor track and it's raining, you get to walk inside, like mm. kind mm. of take away the barriers as much as we can. Yeah. You know, sometimes people will ask myself or other therapists, right, like, what can I do to support somebody's mental health? Mm. And you just gave so many <laughs> small but simple examples of how we can support one another and not even really have to talk about, quote unquote, the hard things. Yeah. By simply recognizing somebody's name, by mm -hmm. making a connection, by noticing when they're not there, right? Yeah. I mean, that makes somebody feel seen, feel like, oh, you notice, right? Yeah. I mean, just how important that is. It's a way we can all support one another. Definitely. You know, by taking our eyes out of our phones, maybe a little <laughs> know, bit and I noticing know. one another, it's right? It's tough. And you, I see it with staff all the time too. You know, you get that maybe you're having a bad day or you, you took a hard phone call from someone who was kind of upset about something. And then we, we all have our favorite members, like, let's be honest. And when that member walks through the door and you your whole attitude just changes, you're like, oh, it's okay. Like, it's they're here and you chat with them a little bit, you know, what's going on kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it gives us as much as staff as much mm -hmm. as it does for the members. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. A important, important note, right? Yeah. We all have mental health. Yes. Not Back just to the, the all, members. Yes, we all have staff. mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a great point. So we're trying also to be more um, in front of our staff with that kind of messaging too. We've added Excellent. a mental health corner to our staff newsletter. Um, we've tried to push more resources out to them, you know, kind of, if you need something, let us know. Um, we, we want to support our own as well. Um, cause everyone has mental health. Everyone so. has mental health. 
Yeah. There is no health without mental health. There, and mental yeah. health and physical health are yep. so, so connected. Yes. And he health is wealth. We have a member that says that. So, yeah. So true. Yeah. So true. Well, this has been a delight <laughs> talking to you, Kim, about all that's going on at the Center for Wellbeing yes. uh, at uh, the Y here in Nashua. And, you know, again, I just appreciate the spirit that you bring to this <laughs> and um, that not only you, but all the leadership at the Y just being so open uh, to collaboration. And like you said, in small ways all along, but then this opportunity just allowed it all to explore expand so yeah. just such a delight so thank yeah. you thank you thank you for the opportunity we're really excited yeah. yeah so thank you for sharing about that with us today appreciate it and thank you thank you for watching listening to the empower hour with greater national mental health and we hope that you have an empowered day